Well, before we continue on with the spring of 1776, you, you kind of play a game and get a feel for it. And I got a little question about Washington and him leading, leading the Army of the North. Uh, hold on a second. I think my map has moved. I'm going to have to fix my, fix my kink in my map because none of my lines are lining up. Hold on a second. I'm not a big fan of the map, but we got back. All right. And it don't really tell you in here, but I'm pretty sure Washington can only be in charge of Washington's army. Meaning that we will have to put Schuyler in charge of the Army of the North. And I guess move uh, Washington on down. Something else I wanted to check out too about that attack was... Uh, we went into St. John. How many attack factors do we have here? He has four, five, six, seven. I'm pretty sure we should have only attacked with seven attack factor strength points instead of nine because we had to leave two at uh, Ticonderoga. There you go. So we had, to, we had to leave two there, which meant the attack... So it should have been two strength points lower. So let's see here. Oh, what was that roll? It was a big roll. Yeah, we'll redo that real quick. Uh, seven strength points with a big roll. It's still the same. Okay, there you go. We put it on the nine table. He couldn't have attacked with nine if he was taking, if he was leaving two strength points at Ticonderoga for a garrison. So we did that uh, battle wrong. Luckily for us, though, with his uh, seven strength point column, but still he had a big roll of a 12 or more, and still is a two star. So uh, the result's still the same. Just wanted to make sure that we did it right, and I was definitely aware of the mm, miss procedure or the man. I don't know how to explain it, but anyway, uh, get everything cleaned up here. All right, then, that's good to see. So I have no effect. Now, what we need to do is take Washington out of here. He can only be in charge of the army of uh, Washington's army or whatever. So we'll leave him here in Ticonderoga. There you go. The army of the north. Oh, now, I think this, we wouldn't have had another plus two modifier with him so let's go back here because I want to do this as right as possible or did we do with that he wouldn't have got a plus two on his modifier so that would have been uh, only a one strength point yeah let's give that to the British so they suffered one that means how would not have been eliminated so let's give them back one let's do this right we'll be right back all right, we have here armies of the north. Both northern armies could operate only in a northern region, so we got to operate in the northern regions to uh, conquer Quebec and Montreal. So here you go. We'll go back over here, and they can only uh, northern armies can only operate in the northern region. Oh, there you go, right here. Northern region is considered Canada. So there you go. Uh, Washington's army can only operate in 13 colonies. Washington would have had to have stayed back at Ticonderoga. And Schuyler, who was the commander, would have went ahead. Now that took off Washington's added plus two Dyro modifier in that uh, battle. So to make it right, we're going to make them. They only lost one, which means Howell did not have to roll. And he will retreat, I guess, into Montreal. Ooh, the Army of the North of St. Saint Je Saint Jean. I guess that's the way to pronounce it. I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I, Saint Jean, I say St. John. But anyway, St. Jean. We will retreat him back there, so that will be the result. Now, the British can maybe form an army. I'll have to see real quick. I don't know if they can do that. It's still the British turn. We haven't moved the marker yet to the uh, early spring. 
and uh, I believe now they probably can uh, form an army. Let me make sure. I think they have to have a three-star general. How is two? Clinton is two. Dunmore is two. So they don't have a three-star general. The only three-star general is Carlton. So now, Carlton really needs to get over it as quick as possible. We have one strength point. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine, ten. What? No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll give the Colonials a uh, match. Strength point wise, they might even uh, surpass them now because the army in the north only has four, five, six, eight, and one to one. Wow, they did it! <laughs> All right, we're going to see how, what to do with this. Luckily, it's a spring and reinforcements are coming in, but this is a whole new ball game, and I'm glad we got that straightened out. So, therefore, Washington, when he does form his army, it'll be Washington's army, and he can only for, uh, operate down here in the 13 colonies, which is fine. So I believe that is the way we do it. Mr. Collins, we got you covered. Yeah, we're uh, feeling our way through this game. And uh, we're up to date now. We're ready to move the marker to the early spring, I do believe. Since they can't form an army without Clinton being in charge. Make sure now that we're up to date and uh, we won't have to do this anymore either. Uh, we will have some card... Uh, Redrawn. I think we do that in the spring. All kinds of stuff coming up. I'm going to make sure we follow the procedures. But that is it. All right. Colonial still going for that victory condition before the French enter the war. And it's a race on. I got two spots here. And we have a card. We can get that British political will down to zero for a win. But we're up against it now. They've called for their uh, loyalist. They've answered the call. And there you go. Now, I wonder if those loyalists can move out at region to region. I guess they can. We'll have to see about that. We'll be right back. And the rules limits their movement from region to region. But after a certain time, the loyalists are not really used in the game. They're more or less incorporated into the regular units of the British Army so I guess that means they didn't operate independently the Brits pretty much say hey get over here get trained and you're part of us now so uh, that was after a certain date I didn't, can't really look it up yet all right so we're gonna go ahead and look through the procedures for a new uh, turn marker which will go from winter to early spring you can see here both of them uh, as it was historically, I guess they, uh, it was turning into the fighting season. So we'll get everybody mustered for their first big clash. The, uh, Colonials had a, what do you call it, uh, a draw, or, uh, oh, I can't come up with a word, uh, stalemate in Boston. So everybody headed on up here for the victory conditions of Montreal and Quebec, and that's where we're going now as we're getting on through there. We'll be able to form an army. The uh, British are getting ready to form their army, but they need Clinton. They need to do a little switch of uh, leaders. Anyway, that's probably what we could do right now because that does happen during the end of turn phase. Let me make sure there is no attrition or end of enlistments. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen during the 1775-76 years. We just checked that out, but I just want to double check. We'll be right back. We avoid all that winter quarter and everything, but note to self and note to any players of this game, when it comes fall, get your units into some big cities or a fortress or a magazine. Yeah, or else you'll, you will suffer uh, some attrition uh, from the effects of winter. So that's a big note you want to make on this game is yeah when it starts getting getting the fall late summer fall you want to get those boys on in there for winter luckily we didn't have no effect to that right now because everybody's eager beavered plenty of bodies to go around ranks have not thinned out to that point yet all right 
uh, early spring. We want to make sure we're doing this right. Uh, winter turns. Attrition, no. Overquartering, no. Both sides remove all magazines at the end of the turn. Hmm. All right. All six nations units return to their respective. Oh. All six nations units are no six nations units on the board yet. If British withdrawals in effect, so the only thing we got to look at here is both sides have removed all magazines at the end of the turn. I'm thinking that has to be in effect when we do the uh, winter quartering and all that. I'm going to make sure real quick on that. We'll be right back. All right. Well, we're not going to expand them or expend them because there's been no winter quartering yet. But during the reinforcement phase of only the early spring turns, the British player can place one magazine in each region and in Canada if they contain at least one strength point. Oh, regulars. Five can be placed. Oh, that's errata. It's off of the errata sheet. There. All right, let me look at that. Then we could do the same thing with the Colonials, so let's do that before we uh, do anything else. We'll be right back. All right, don't really see any magazine needs to be created right now. The British player, there might be one or two spots there, but they'd be threatened to be taken over by the Colonials, and you don't want to lose a magazine. All right, let's see here. Another uh, thing you want to keep in mind, too, is keeping those leaders with those weak forces that are going to lose a battle now that we know we got a roll for them. I thought maybe they could make their escape. I could have swore it said they could make their escape. Let me check that out real quick. Yeah, I'm guessing it was when uh, armies moved in, and this is probably what happened before uh, our leaders just uh, retreated. You could, you know, retreat before combat. So that I'm pretty sure we've done everything right. The only time we had that battle, and he lost all those units. It might have been with Howler. It might have been one other time earlier, but it, it doesn't really affect the game, I don't think, right now. So uh, we will continue with spring, early spring, procedures of 1776. We'll be back. All right, just to make sure we do this right, you don't remove magazines till the end of the turn. We haven't done anything like that yet. We did all our phases. Our action cycle is done with. There was only two pulses in that action cycle. No victory. Advance to your season marker. We did that, so we're back up here to reinforcements. Uh, we'll place reinforcements now. British will place theirs first. Oh, we'll transfer our leaders first. There's no way. Both players place their reinforcements. All right, I guess we'll do that. And then the British player can transfer leaders. So you place reinforcements first. All right. Where is the British reinforcement chart? Here we go. Spring, remove Gage. Wow, promote how he gets flipped over. Transfer Burgoyne and Clinton. Oh, add Cornwallis. We'll be back. First thing we're doing is removing Gage. See a Gage. Don't know what to do with them, but we will promote Hal. So we'll grab old Hal here. He's on his two star side. Flip him over. Oh, and now he is on his three star side. So. There you go. We have done that. Uh, transfer Burgoyne and Clinton. We'll, uh, we'll find out what that means. I have no idea. Add Cornwallis. All right, let me be right back. All right, we're reading this through these rules and feeling our way through the game. These rules can be kind of vague. I'll got to have a little crit critique of Mr. Collins' game. I mean, he's a player, too, and he should, I don't know, I'm going to say no better, but... Okay, uh, what, what we have been doing, which may be wrong, is when it says, oh, and the reinforcements, the British player can transfer any leaders from and to friendly spaces within North America. That's true, and we have been doing that, but that's wrong. The British player can transfer any leaders, what it says on here transfer all right so you don't just at the end of a turn willy-nilly transfer these leaders like we have been doing all right we're going to quit that from now on the only one we the only one that qualifies for transfer now and the thing of it is we really haven't been it's only been the 1775 turn uh, let me see here 
I do remember transferring a bunch of leaders though, or just willy nilly. But we're we're gonna we got the game down pat now. We'll be all right. But yeah, you can only transfer leaders when it tells you you can transfer them. So now Burgoyne and Clinton are available for switching for being transferred. All these units here, uh, they all go to the uh, European or British box. It says here, 1776, transfer art to the transfer, add Cornwallis. Uh, where did I see that at? Parker Squadron, Brazier. All right, it says to Quebec, even if colonial control, you put them in the European box or British box. And when he moves by sea, they will go to Quebec. So even if so, they're going in there no matter what. <laughs> Deploy magazines, we already checked that out. Here are the units here. They're all coming on. Let me make sure we got this right. Parker Squadron. Plus three. Now that's another thing. It don't tell us. I guess these units have to stick with their leaders when we bring them on. So, uh, Add Cornwallis. We got, we're going to have him in the... Uh, European box. Uh, we removed Gage. Parker's squadron plus three British regulars will be in the European box. Fraser plus five British regulars will be in the European box. Reed Diesel plus five German regulars will be a, go in the European box. But Reed Diesel and his five German regulars have to go to Quebec, even if colonial controlled all right that is it i think we got it all set to go here so these all go into the european box and we can transfer for going and clinton so yeah you don't transfer none of these guys willy-nilly at the end and like i said it could be a little bit clearer but i think we figured it out now because i was looking underneath here a couple of saying uh Transfer. Where do you see transfer anywhere? <laughs> I've looked word for word. I did see it here. Transferred. Oh, it's tough. And the, you know, index don't really give you much on the word transfer. But there you go. British leaders, except for those in the European box, can be transferred to any friendly location on the board except the Caribbean. Colonial leaders, except those in the leader pool box, can be transferred. So... Well, let's look and see on a colonial reinforcement when it says transfer. So the only ones that are available from transfer in the whole game up to now, the ones that we moved shouldn't have been moved, are we're going to Clinton. All right, we'll be right back. All right, well, since this board is so big, i got to use my old push-me-pull-you, but it comes in really handy. Get these units to right on up there. There you go, on up. We're all set to go. There were ones in the box. Oh, available for transfer are Burgoyne and Clinton. So Burgoyne and Clinton are available for transfer. We will definitely transfer them. Uh, but if we do, shoot. We need to get Clinton into Montreal. Huh. But that leaves something open, I guess. Clinton to Montreal, Burgoyne, to Quebec. And these old boys here, I guess I'll have to stay without no leader, which is fine. I guess they're just there, but that's what we wanted to do. Don't want to leave Quebec without no leader. And it doesn't, the only two it says, that I'm interpreting it as that can be transferred are Burgoyne and Clinton. The other ones are going to stay there. We got a whole mess of Freaking generals in the Montreal, we got a bunch. And it can be now formed into an army, so they're gonna form an army in the Montreal coming on up. We wanna make sure we're all set here. There are militia uh, triggering events that come up now in 17, all kinds of things. We just wanna make sure we get it right. Uh, we will now be going up here to the uh, uh, four action pulses again only two during the winter we're back to the all fours and we will have to roll for the initiative so we'll take this on off all right 
Uh, make sure we got this right. We'll be right back. All right, well, magazines help in winter quartering. But they also help with the uh, lines of communication. So we're going to go ahead and build a magazine in a fortification. I didn't know if that was redundant or what, but it says in uh, the rule book that magazines were created in uh, uh, fortresses. So we'll create a magazine there. We'll also create a magazine here in uh, Montreal. So there you go. We're getting a quite the stack there. And that can be done during the reinforcement phase. That is where we are on. We haven't gone to the colonial one yet. But anyway, there you go. Magazine created. Uh, make sure we're doing this all right. And we'll get back ready for the uh, colonial reinforcement phase. And here we have uh, we get to roll on the continental levy table. He can deploy four magazines and we remove Montgomery. And the leader pool goes Lincoln. And we promote Skylar. All kinds of stuff to do. We'll be right back. All right, if we're reading this right, uh, first thing we're going to do is roll for the Continental Unit. After 1775, the Colonial American player races Continental. Strike points every early spring turn in the reinforcement phase by rolling a D12 checking on a chart so for new hampshire we got a bunch of these to do wow all right new hampshire and massachusetts here we go oh snake eyes that's the worst so they get four we gotta we gotta bring out a bunch of units here we'll be right back all right they had the biggest possibility of units coming up or they do each turn huh rhode island if they get the snake eyes they won't get none so they need a high roll just to get any units placed in there. Oh, that looks good. Six and a three, so a nine for Rhode Island. Gives them one strength point. So I think we need to put these in here as soon as we're doing this roll. Let me check these out real quick and we'll be right back. All right, New Hampshire four and Massachusetts. We get our two. We are now rolling four. Oh. Should we roll for Rhode Island? Let me see. Oh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Four, okay. So we'll put the, we'll switch this on over here to this one here. New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Uh, one, two, two. There you go, that's more like it. Yeah, New Hampshire, two. Massachusetts, two. We had four on that. Now we just rolled for roll on the island. Ooh, they got a nine. So I guess they get the one in Rhode Island. We determined it. That is right here, Newport. So there you go. I'm going to have to clip these counters off real quick. We'll be right back. Connecticut die roll. Two guys looking for high numbers for the call to go out. The initial recruitment drive for the revolution. Oh, good number. Connecticut answers the call with four. Uh, I think we'll split these up. We give them two twos. And make sure that we see over here Connecticut. Yeah, we'll split them up. We'll be right back. All right, we're going to split these on up in New Hampshire. And the key thing we're going to start to do is occupy these coastal spots so instead of putting them all inland uh, this one here at Massachusetts would put it at uh, Boston but they're taken care of we really need to split that one up at Northfield and put him down here at Barnstable oh yeah well I think we got him pretty well blocked there so that's a that's the name of the game that's what we're gonna do with these uh, after we roll for these colonial regulars uh, Connecticut really answered the call. Uh, I think you, there's a limit. You can't have more strength points that no more than four strength points per space. So we kind of spread them out. But you can see here the British, he calls them lines of communication sources, but they're supply sources either way. 
mainly come from these uh, coastal areas, so we'll definitely be cutting them off from there. Uh, yeah, definitely. That's why you'll be doing that. All right, next we're rolling for Connecticut came through New York with two dice. Or, and the most they can have is two, so New York, a little stingy on the cards with a five. And New York gets a, only, only going to contribute one, they say. So let's go find us here. Where in the heck is New York? Oh, New York. Are we out here? Oh, there it is. White. All right, white New York. We will. Let me check this out real quick. Right back. I believe we should put them in there with Washington and Ticonderoga. But we might want to put the cut them off some other spot. Uh, now let's go ahead and put him in Ticonderoga. So I only get. He's only contributing one to the cause, but that'll give us three in that little spot there, so, yeah, for New York, raising their forces, to put them in Ticonderoga. All right, this is kind of cool, I like this. All right, New Jersey now, oh, they go, and it can, you can kind of tell their spirit decor about how much they max out. Pennsylvania's really gung-ho, and so is Virginia, so we're going to New Jersey next. Only two dice. Looking for a high number. And it might be uh, based on their population and their ability to contribute to so that could be two. All right, eight. So New Jersey, contributing two to the cause. Uh, we're gonna break it down into two ones, I think. We'll be right back. All right, then the two New Jerseys. We'll keep on the coast again to block their line of communication. So they go block the coast against those Seed loving mothers <laughs> or the Brits. Oh, let me see. Oh, uh, King George, you fabulous us will be. I read your book, so that's what we'll pat with us. All right, we will continue on. And that's, that was a bear to find that they got Pennsylvania, New York, New Hampshire. You can see the, they're all in white here. Who knows what that is? I guess that's New England. Uh, or Maine, you know, whatever, but the markings are kind of, good luck on New Jersey. Yeah, you can see it right here, New Jersey, but it ain't really marked in white either for a specific region. All right now, we're rolling for Pennsylvania, and they have the uh, potential to be gung-ho for a high dive. Oh, they're one, two, they're one, two, oh yeah. Pennsylvania ans answers a call with four strength points. We'll be right back. All right, now Pennsylvania. We'll put one in Philadelphia and the rest in all the key spots. And that pretty well covers up the key spots, giving us the colony of Pennsylvania under colonial control. And it's something else we might have been able to do with units here. We got Connecticut. Uh, or is that New Jersey? I deal boys are into. Yeah, see, here we go again. New Jersey's down here, but only one, one key spot from Connecticut. You see what I mean? We could be covering these key spots. We'll look this over. We aren't, we're not going to be done with this. This will be in progress, but let's go on down here now to Delaware. Delaware, kind of stingy. You need a high die roll just to get one colonial strike point. Oh, six for Delaware. And that gives them nothing. They do not buy into the program. <laughs> yeah, come on, Delaware, jump on the jump on the winning twenty team. All right, Maryland, looking for a high die roll just for two. Oh, Maryland says yet. All right, it's a three, one strength. The point goes to Maryland. That's not good. All right, unfortunately, he's full of hanging chads. We'll be right back. All right, cleaned up version in the right denomination of a one. So Maryland, we will go to the port of Baltimore and Maryland with our only one. We can't cover up the, I think we got them pretty well covered. Uh, it'll be clean, it'll be uh, curious to see how the British 
start tracing these lines of communication with all these ports being uh, occupied by newly recruited colonial regulars. Maryland is uh, done uh, in the region of Tidewater. Virginia will be rolling. Looking for a high number. And Virginia has the capacity to give us four strike points. So eager. They got a seven. And that gets it to us for Virginia. All right, four. We'll divide these on up. We'll be right back. All right, for Virginia, we'll definitely take the port of Alexandria and the other key spot in Charlottesville. Hold on for a clear throat break. Then with our last two, we'll reinforce Richmond with old uh, Ward. There you go. He's got a magazine in there and a fortress too. Fortress won't come into effect for the any strength points over two, but still, there you go. It'll double them on up. Way to go, Virginia. All right, the Carolinas and Georgia. Eh, not too hip. We will see what we can do. Squeeze every last strength point we can out of them. Not looking good, you're looking stingy. Six. Stingy in the Carolinas with just a one strength point. Contributing to the cause. Ooh, I think we got this one here. Oh, the Carolinas and Georgia. Carolinas. We will definitely take over the port of Wilmington. There you go. That'll be it. Wow. Check that out. <laughs> Talking about calling up the locals, having them all trained and ready to go in the spring. There you go. Good luck with those lines of communications. British player. All right, we got to go check on football. Oh, here in my city, out of Gateway to the West, our team has been yanked by the trader. Cronky, but we still uh, have some fun with the uh, DraftKings and my uh, daily fantasy. But uh, that's the only that's the only interest I have in it is the players that play it, not even the teams. I can tell us about what team wins, it's which player I think is going to perform the best. But anyway, we'll be back having some good times. We're still on the uh, transition between uh, winter and early spring. Early spring, a lot of stuff to do. We'll be right back. All right. Roll on the colonial levy table. We get to deploy our magazines and remove Montgomery. So Montgomery here in Worcester, you're gone for some reason. Put him back and find out what we want to do about magazines. Magazines are good to have. We'll be right back. All right. Well, mostly they're used for winter quartering. So I mean, you can have them down here in the south, but right now the action's up north. And we're going to expend three of them. One in Norwich. The strength point there. One in Ticonderoga with Washington and his troops. And then, uh, old Skyler and the Army of the North here at St. Jean. Who also have themselves a magazine and a fortress. Or a fort, rather, at St. Jean. It'll be that. Let's see if we can move on here. Colonial reinforcement chart. Uh, deployed our well, three magazine, three out of four. We removed Montgomery and the leader pool. We will put Lincoln. There you go. We get to promote Skylar. So we'll do that right now. He's our boy in charge of our in charge of our army of the north. That's great. So Skylar here gets promoted. Congratulations. Sir, we'll be right back. All right, uh, see you later, Montgomery. We hardly knew you. <laughs> and hello, Lincoln. He will go into the leader pool. And we have three leaders there. Leader pool for the colonial players overrunneth. All right, we are getting there. We are getting there. I think it's kind of time to replenish our cards. I'll check that out. But that is it for the uh, reinforcements for the Colonials and the uh, British. Now, what we did in past turns, and like I said, I'm glad this is only the first part of the game. 
is we willy-nilly start transferring these generals wherever they wanted to go. Only if it has transfer on there. Let me see here if it has transfer on anything with the uh, colonials. I don't see nothing. War weariness. Remove, promote, demote. I don't see anything here about transferring any uh, colonials. Now it's look under here, under the British. And that's the only time you'll be transferring these uh, leaders, not on your own at the end, like we misinterpreted that. Transfer here, transfer here, transfer here. So in a few instances, you will transfer your leaders. So uh, it is what it is. You know, we did what we did. I don't think it has any big outcome on the game because we did transfer Montgomery and a couple generals each time you'll see it on the videos but you don't do that as a matter of fact colonials don't get transferred <laughs> looks like the British are the only ones could have been more clear on the uh, rules but as war gamers you can kind of figure it out and that's what we're doing all right I don't know if we're gonna call this a video I'm gonna stop it here before we get on to the eh, let me check out the card replenishment we'll be right back back up here at the sequence of play Early spring turns only. Each player, British first positions his available magazines. That's fine. Uh, commencing in 1770. So we kind of did this out of order because we already rolled on the uh, chart to raise and place new continental strength points. So it is what it is. Ain't no big deal. But uh, it, it is best to do it this way. Okay. Set aside by year. So we have to get these cards here. They have 1776 on them. We'll right back. All right, then, 1776 cards, discard pile, all put into a brand new draw deck. Gotta shuffle these up. New draw pile, 1776 incorporated, or included. Oh, British player only has two cards, so he will draw one card. It is an extended March card. So there you go. Oh, the uh, colonial player has three cards. But he will draw one anyway. Uh, top card and in his extended march card. Let me see which card I want to discard. Uh, hmm. 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 Thinking about getting rid of one of these leaders. We got plenty of leaders. I mean, they could help throw in, but we don't have that many armies going up here. Yeah, let's get rid of one of these. Let me look at them and see who is that's a better one. And we might just take an extended march card. It might come in handy. We'll be right back. All right, these leaders, when you bring them on, if they only add one di point to the die roll, which is all well enough and good, but do you have no more a tactical leader and? Huh. When you bring them on as a regular leader, do you take, I guess you have to take off the damn What <laughs> goes on with that? Uh, doppelganger, doppelganger. All right. We, uh, shoot, 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 shoot. We're going to put, and, uh, we'll put Morgan back into the pile. Or should we discard him? All right, anyway, and we'll take this card. And I'll take care of us there. There, there. I think we're ready to continue the game. We're all set up. I think that was it. Dearborn won't go on. Yeah. So, we discarded Dearborn, or Daniel Morgan. Uh, cut Dearborn. All right, that'll be it. Let me make sure everything is good. This one's a play. Yep. There you go. Early spring. The player already has four cards, draws one, that discards any of his choice. All right, we're good to go. We'll be coming down here in the next video, rolling for the initiative. Be right back. Alright then, we are ready to get on with uh, a new turn. We're all set. Look what happened in the colonies. <laughs> spring of 1776, it's spreading like fire. And the British are up against it. There you go, it's moved on up here. Washington, where the colonials, one space short. That might be a big deal coming on up. I just couldn't grab those two spots. We're not done yet, but British got some nice moves and feature. Strength points coming on in. And they were able to reinforce 
with the uh, Loyalists. Montreal. So we are up against it. We are excited about getting going with this game. Everybody's been restocked, and let's see what happens. We're calling this a video before it gets too long. Great game. Uh, curious to see how it turns out. Having a great time. Be back.